What is the Dragon Ride? It's 4,200 cyclists taking part over three different distances. The Grand Fondo, which I did, is 133 miles, 10,600 feet of climbing, over eight categorised climbs through the Brecon Beacons in Wales. It is said it is the UK's toughest sportive. So I thought I'd give it a go. This would be the, not the furthest I've ever ridden, but certainly the most climbing I've ever done in one ride. So to prepare for this epic, my training rides consisted of as many long rides I could do with as many hills thrown in. I also did a couple of just longer rides, not too worried about the elevation. So I cycled the length of the M25 and I did a 200 km Audax. So with the ride taking place in South Wales, I hired a car and I drove down and I stayed at my mum's for a couple of nights before the ride. Um, she lives near the Forest of Dean on the Welsh border. So I stayed there, but it still meant I had a super early start on the day of the ride. I left my mum's house at 5am uh, to arrive at Port Talbot for 6.30 which would give me enough time to kind of get the bike out of the car, put the wheel on, pump up the tires, check my kit, put my number on, all that kind of stuff uh, before my start time. Because the ride was postponed from, I think July, when it was supposed to be until the end of September, the weather was pretty changeable. It was cloudy and overcast, Starting the ride when the sun's only just come up meant it was pretty cold. I knew I'd be getting warm on the climbs, cold on the descents. So in the end, I went for a short sleeve jersey with a lightweight gilet and arm warmers. I forgot to pack my rain jacket, which I could have done with later on. But that was pretty good. Um, yeah, I think that was the right the right choice of clothing um, in hindsight um, with the changeable weather and elevation and everything. That um, yeah, felt pretty good. Good morning. Here we go. The day has finally come. It's dragon ride time. Just going to head to the start line. I've done my stretches. I've done my warm up. I've done my sports poo. I am ready. Let's get to the. Start line. Let's slay some dragons. Okay, so here we are, we're on our way. 130 miles, 10,000 feet of climbing, up and down some Welsh mountains, slaying some dragons on the way. Should be a good day out. So the first hill you get to, um, the first categorised hill you get to is Sardis Hill. And each of the climbs on the website have a rating out of 10. So Sardis Hill, they give a three out of 10. It's quite a short, sharp hill, 1.1 uh, kilometers long, average of 6.3% with a max of 14%. So it gets pretty steep, but nothing too, too drastic. We were all kind of still bunched up for Sardis Hill because it's only 10 miles into the ride. And coming down was a little bit kind of hairy because some people were a lot braver or mad than I am. Then 25 miles in, you've got Glynneth Hill, which is 3.2 kilometers, average of 5.4% and a max of 13%. So that was quite a nice kind of consistent gradient, nothing too too scary with that um, and by that point the the group was kind of thinning a little bit as well so you had a bit more space to move around and all of my training rides have been kind of solo rides I've done a couple of, of rides with Ray um, and Ross but generally um, I was doing all my training rides on my own next up was the Black Mountain they give this one a 7 out of 10 
It's 5.3 kilometers long with an average gradient of 5.8% and a max of 10%. So it doesn't get too steep, but it's long and draggy. And the weather was really closing in at this point as well. Once you reach the top of Black Mountain, it was just fog. Um, you couldn't really see anything. And it was at this point as well that I realized or I discovered that my GoPro was no longer working. Uh, my GoPro has stopped working for some reason. So unless I can fix it at the feed stop, I might have to put the film on my phone for this video for the rest of it. Which sucks, but uh, it is what it is. Right, I've got a big old descent coming up now. Visibility is not great, as you can see. But uh, yeah, good clouds. Good fun so far. Legs are feeling alright. Sure, 50 miles in, 80 to go, and a few hills. And what I found, as much as going up the hills is difficult and painful, once I started descending, I forgot all about the pain that had gone before. It's, it's amazing when you're just freewheeling down these massive, epic sweeping mountain roads it's the closest feeling i think you can get to flying and it it's it's why i love cycling it just feels so incredibly free and just relaxed and you got this amazing scenery all around you and just going fast on on these beautiful roads um just just feels so good so you follow that up with a couple of 5 out of 10 climbs. You've got Kerig Duan, probably pronouncing that horribly, which is 7 kilometers long with an average of 4% and a max of 8%. And then you've also got Bryn Rud, another 5 out of 10 climb, which is 8.9 kilometers long with an average of 3% and a max of 8%. So two long, draggy climbs that aren't really too taxing in terms of the, the steepness, but just like the the, the time it takes to get up them just because of the length of them um, was quite something. So I hadn't reached the food stop at this point. I thought, I think in my head I had it had the food stop around 60 miles, but it was actually 75. A bit over five hours in, just stopped for some food. A bag of potatoes. Going all right. Um, I thought the food stop was nearer than it is. So uh, I just stopped on the side of the road, had my last doriaki. Yeah, 70 odd miles done, less than 60 to go, which is nice. And then it was one of the bigger climbs. So Devil's Elbow, they gave an eight out of 10, and this is the, the timed climb. So for those that aren't already destroyed 85 miles into this ride um can can go for a, a time up it and there's there's prizes available and ordinarily when i see a sign that says like timed or race or go or something something in my brain even if i know that i've got no chance of doing anything something in my brain makes me put in more effort this was one of the rare occasions that my legs were saying no, my lungs were saying no, and my brain went, yeah, you know what, you're right, let's just get up it. It's not long, it's 1.8 kilometers long, but its average gradient is 10.3% with a max of 17%. A couple of beautiful switchbacks on it, and it was also at this point that the rain started to come down. So seeing as Devil's Elbow was a timed climb, even though I wasn't really racing up it. I did obviously check my time afterwards and I did it in seven minutes, 58 seconds. The fastest person did it in 5.17, which put me 530 second out of 1,831. So top third, happy with that. And that kind of shows a little bit the split of the different distances so 4200 riders in total 
but not everyone would be doing Devil's Elbow uh, because it wasn't part of the of the route they were doing. So there's the Macmillan 100, which is 100 kilometers, and there's another route, I think the Medio Fondo, and then the Grand Fondo. There is ordinarily a another distance, but because of the postponement and it being later in the year, there's less daylight. So the Grand Fondo was, was actually the furthest distance you could do this year. And if you've been watching the channel for a while, you may know that I like to compete against other Bigfoot riders. They don't know I'm doing it, but I do, um, to see who can go fastest up, up certain hills. I don't have a Bigfoot a KOM yet, but there was one other Bigfoot rider doing the Dragon Ride this year, and I beat them by 20 seconds. So that's, that's always nice. And then going along the top and the descent afterwards, it chucked it down. It was so wet, I was soaked through. And up until that point, my clothing choice had been pretty good, but I was, I was cold, I was shivering, I was miserable and I just wasn't having a good time but I could see patches of blue sky and that's kind of what kept me going knowing that the rain would stop soon and I was only cold because I'd been descending in the wet once I started climbing again I'd soon warm up and soon enough I hit Rikos and the rain had stopped and if I wanted to climb to warm up Rikos was gonna was gonna do that. Um, it's got a six out of ten rating from the Dragon Ride. Five point six kilometers long, an average of four point eight percent, and a max of ten. So it does get relatively steep in places, but generally it's, it's quite a consistent um, gradient. So it's it's not it's not too taxing. Once you get into a good rhythm, um, it's fine. That is the top of Rikos and the last big climb of the ride. Nope. We've got, I don't know, 28, 27 miles to go. Mostly downhill from here. Nope. Which would be nice, but my shoulders really ache, so I'm not going to be in aero tuck, because that will hurt too much. It was raining pretty heavily going up Devil's Elbow, which is brutal, so I didn't bother stopping at the top of that. It stopped now. Sun's trying to break through. Hopefully, it stays dry for the last couple of hours. I'll see you soon. And I thought this was the last climb. This was 96 miles in. And I thought, ah, they can't fit in another mountain, surely. They could. They could fit in another mountain. Um, the Bulk. 110 miles in. 7 out of 10 rating. 7.9 kilometers long. Average 4.6% and a max of 12%. This for me was the toughest hill. I think Wild Devil's Elbow is categorised as harder because it's steeper. I found it easier than I did the bulk. And I think a lot of that is because you're 110 miles in to a very hilly ride at this point. But I I set myself, one of the goals I set myself was not to stop and have to walk at any point on the ride. And it was it was close to happening on the bulk. And I don't know if anyone else does this, but I was basically doing like five pedal strokes and then pausing and doing like a half second, just little micro rests. So like one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Just to get over kind of the, the steepest section um, when my legs are kind of like just really aching, my neck was aching as well. Um, but that was, that was enough to get me up and over the bulk. It's up with the bulk. Rikos wasn't the last climb, but this definitely is. <laughs> Eighteen miles or so, seventeen, eighteen miles. So they can't surely fit in any more hills. 
downhill to Port Talbot. And then it was just the last descent. Um, just beautiful, beautiful descents um, in Wales. It's such a nice route. Even if you only do part of it, I would, I would highly recommend just looking up the Dragon Ride route. And if you're, if you're local or you can make a weekend of it, head to Wales, head to the Brecon Beacons. Um, I've said before that I just love the cycling in Wales. Having only done it once before on my Long Nash Cymru trip, but it, it was just so nice to be back on those roads again. So then it was just really the last sort of 20 miles back to Port Talbot and the, the bike was an absolute dream. Um, it performed perfectly, there was no mechanical issues at all, gear changes were all smooth, braking was great, responsive. I saw a few people like maybe like only five miles into the ride stopped at the side of the road with a puncture or something and I felt so gutted for them. Like you just know that they've been training for this ride for so so long and for that to happen so early on um, must just be absolutely devastating. The Oro was an absolute dream. I just love that bike. So good. So I finished the ride and I got my medal and I completed the distance in nine hours, one minute and 25 seconds. And yes, that one minute and 25 seconds does annoy me. I had in my head that it was 131 miles, the route, and heading back to um, the start finish point, which is in like a big country park just outside of Port Talbot on the outskirts of it. Um, it was a headwind heading back in, but I was, I was pushing hard. Um, I could see the time that I'd gone, I could see the distance and I was like, right, I can, it's 131 miles, I can do this sub nine hours. And I was pushing and pushing and pushing. And then it, it got to like nine hours and I was on like 132 miles. And I just, I just went off the pace completely. I like psychologically, um, that just kind of finished me. I think I was, I was maybe like 8.58 or something at 132 miles. And because it's the same stretch of road as when you first head out, you kind of know how far it is. And I was like, it's, there's no way this is like just around the corner. It was definitely like more than two minutes or so to go. And I just, I just eased off the pace and I basically I just stopped fighting the headwind um, and just kind of coasted my way through. And for most of the ride, there'd only, there had been people over, like, there had been people overtaking me, of course, but, but not that, not that many and not that regularly. And I was only in that final mile that lots of people were passing me. I just didn't have the, the mental strength to keep pushing for that last mile. I think physically I probably could have done, but yeah, that just wiped me out. But so my 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 race time, my moving time, um, was nine hours and one minute. The total time from start to finish was nine hours forty one. So over one hundred thirty three miles, I only stopped for like rest for forty minutes, which. I'm actually really proud of myself for, I think it's, the majority of that was, was the food stop, um, like the main food stop. And other than that, it would just be like the odd junction, um, stopping for a snack at the side of the road. But nine hours moving time, like I'm, I'm really happy with that to, to have only stopped for 40 minutes. Um, so doing the whole thing sub, sub 10 hours um, was one of my goals. Um, I would have liked my moving time to be sub nine, but that's fine. So that was my big challenge of 2021. And I'm, I'm pleased to say that I, I did it. I conquered it. I slayed some dragons. Uh, didn't see any dragons, 
But what's next? What's my next challenge going to be for 2022? I've got some ideas, um, a couple of events that I'm going to apply for when the ballot opens, including another sportive that claims to be the toughest in the UK. So hopefully I get into that and I can compare the two. But stay tuned for that. I'll let you know when I know what my challenge or challenges are going to be. Because of course I've got a gravel bike as well now, so there might be some off-road stuff to do. If you're watching this because you've signed up for the Dragon Ride 2022, uh, best of luck, you're going to love it. All I can suggest in terms of training is just do as many hills as you can. That's something that worked quite well for me, despite not having really very many comparable hills near to me. Um, just get used to, to riding up hills, um, get your fueling strategy right, and just enjoy it. I, it is an amazing route. It's a really well organised event as well. And yeah, I would I would do it again. I would I would definitely do it again. But not next year. Maybe another time. I'm gonna I say quite content with my Dragon Ride 2021 medal and I'll see what I can add to the collection next year. Thanks for watching. Bye.